Previously on Around the World on Eight Plates, we traveled from Uzbekistan to Malaysia. Where are we going today? Let's find out. Hello, everyone. Welcome to season two, episode four of Around the World on Eight Plates. Today we're going to a different country. Which country is it? We will find out later. And of course, today I'm going to teach you how to cook a certain dish from that country. Hmm. Which dish is it? Hmm. I will also reveal that later on. And finally, of course, you're going to meet someone from the country being featured. What is his name? What is he going to say about that country? Well, you will find out later as well. So, before I tell you which country we're visiting today, it's more fun if you try to guess where we're going. So, I'm going to be punny again. And I would like you guys to guess the country by listening to this monologue. It's punny monologue time. Okay, here we go. So I was in South America once, and I was lost. And there were three streets on the map. I was holding the map, and there were three streets, and I was really confused where to go. So one street was named Ricardo Street. The other street was named. Angel Street or Angel Street, and the last street was named Carlos Street. So I just asked a random person. So he was like, "Oh, it's easy. You just go west or turn right on Carlos Street, and then you go south on Ricardo Street." So the place that I was looking for was south of Ricardo Street. It was south of Ricardo Street. Hmm, that reminds me. It's time for filming. So I need to start filming. But remember, just go west on Carlos Street, and then go south on Ricardo Street because the place is south of Ricardo Street. All right, I'm going to see you later. Presented to you by National Taiwan Normal University Common Core Education Committee, Foreign Language Education Division. Based on the monologue, did you guys guess which country we're visiting today? If not, it's okay because I am going to give you three clues right now. So here are the three clues for you. Clue number one: Well, this country is famous for its wildlife. People go on safaris in this country, and we all know about the Big Five. Big five include lions, elephants, wildebeest, leopards, and rhinos. But people don't just go to this country for the big five. There are other animals as well. Basically, all the animals in Lion King can be found in this country. Let's start with birds. This country is home to the blue velvet, the marabou stork, the flamingo, and the hornbill. Mammals such as the warthog, hyena, cheetah, zebra, kudu. Springbok and giraffe. All this country home. However, not many people know that this country is famous for whale watching. In other countries, you need to travel out to sea by boat to see whales. But in this country, you can just stay on the beach or on the shore, in the comfort of your own home, and see whales jump out of the water from the window. Now, some of these places include Falls Bay, and the place that we call Hermanus, and then towards the east we have the Hoop, and then down south a little bit we have Cape Agulhas, and finally to the east we have Plettenberg Bay. So where else can you book a hotel, walk a little bit? And see whales in their natural habitat without getting wet. That's right, nowhere else but this country. Here is clue number two for you. The country being featured today has a nickname. It's also called the Rainbow Nation. Why the Rainbow Nation? 
Well, it's because of its multi-diversity. How is it multi-diverse? Let's find out. First, in terms of language, this country has 11 languages and all of them are official languages. In fact, if you need a document, you will need to have the document translated into all 11 languages. Additionally, in terms of indigenous groups, of course, we have the Blacks. They include the Zulu, the Kosa, the Bapedi, the Swana, the South Indabela, the Basutu, and of course, you have the Whites, the Malays, the Indians, and the Chinese. Finally, as a tourist, there are many things for you to see and do as well. There are beautiful cities. There is colorful heritage. There are clean beaches. There are wonderful sculptures. There's interesting history. There are penguins on beaches. There is culture and tradition. And there are national parks for safaris. And finally, here is clue number three. Listen carefully. Because I'm going to try to sing a song in the Osa language. So now that the three clues have been mentioned, it's time for us to reveal the answer. Where are we going today? Let's quickly recap. First, in addition to wildlife, this country is famous for whale watching. Second, it's also called the Rainbow Nation. Third, this is where you can find songs in Chosa. And the country's name sounds like South of Ricardo Street. Welcome, South Africa! And the South African dish that we're going to teach everyone is Buboti, or baked spice meat with egg. To understand how to cook bubba tea better, let us quickly learn more about South Africa. Here's a postcard showing us the flag, some basic information, and location of South Africa. Finally, continue reading to find out more about something that sets the government of South Africa apart from all the other countries around the world. For today's dish, you'll need the following ingredients. First of all, for the chutney, you'll need some sugar to taste, an apple, any kind of dried fruit, 1 8 cup, 1 onion, large, 1 teaspoon each of cumin, oregano, and curry powder, and finally, 2 tablespoons vinegar. For the meat, you'll need half a kilogram of ground pork or ground beef. Finally, you'll need some pepper to taste. 1 cup of milk, 2 tablespoons of cooking oil, 1 teaspoon of butter, a tablespoon of any kind of jam, 2 onions, lemon or kamkot, bread, curry powder, 4 teaspoons, 3 to 5 bay leaves, salt to taste, 1 to 2 eggs, 4 teaspoons of tomato paste, and finally 1 teaspoon each of oregano and cumin. Please note that for today's ingredients, the yield is 4 to 6 servings. The first thing you need to do is to soak the bread in the milk. To make things faster, you can tear the bread into smaller pieces. The next step is to prepare the chutney. In a blender, put in one apple, one onion, and the dried fruit. Now blend everything together. When done, make sure that the mixture has a thick consistency. On low heat, simmer the chutney and add some sugar and some vinegar. Two tablespoons to be exact. For the sugar, it will depend on how sweet you want the chutney to be. Just a reminder, the chutney has to be zingy. Then add one teaspoon each of cumin, curry powder, and oregano. And then stir or mix. As it simmers, remove the chutney from the pot and put it in a bowl. 
Step 3. Cook the meat. In a hot skillet with hot oil, stir fry the onions until translucent. Need around 1 to 2 onions. Then add the garlic and the spices. Again, you'll need 4 teaspoons of curry powder, 1 teaspoon oregano, and 1 teaspoon cumin. Now it's time to add the meat. You will need half a kilogram of ground beef or ground pork. Stir fry until the meat is fully cooked and then turn off the heat and then put it in a large bowl. Step 4. Add the condiments. Add in some tomato paste or tomato sauce. Add in the butter and add in the jam. Again, any type of jam will do. After that, add the salt and some pepper to taste. Then add in some lemon zest and the juice of one lemon or three kumquats. And then add in some of the chutney that you prepared before. If you find it too sweet, you can add more lemon juice or kumquat juice. Remember the bread from a while ago? Well, squeeze it so that the milk is squeezed out and then put it in the meat. Then use your hands to mix everything thoroughly or carefully. For the milk that's left over, add one egg, season with some salt, and some pepper. Now pour the egg mixture on top of the meat. Top everything off with bay leaves. Now bake in an oven for around 30 to 50 minutes or until golden brown. The temperature of the oven should be around 180 degrees Celsius. And there you have it, boba tea or baked spiced meat and egg. In case you need it, here is a written recipe for boba tea. Feel free to share in the comments how your boba tea turned out. I know during this pandemic, it's difficult and dangerous to travel abroad. Fortunately, we can taste a bit of South Africa right in the comfort of our own home. If you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe to get weekly video recipes. Anyway, enough talking. Here is a written recipe. Now let's welcome our guest, our special guest, Mr. Andrew Clerk. Hi folks, my name is Andrew, Andrew Clerk, and I'm from South Africa. Um, I lived there since I was born, 1975, for about 18, 19 years I lived there. Then I moved abroad and lived in various countries, South America, North America, Europe, and of course, beautiful Taiwan. And I am so surprised to be given this true authentic South African dish here by Joe. It is amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad that you like it. Absolutely fantastic. I never thought I would be able to eat, eat it in such an authentic way here in Taiwan. Uh -huh. So definitely well done. This is so good. Thank you. Like, you know, like it's surprising how we can find all the ingredients, most of the ingredients, right? Well, do you know where Babuati originates from? No. So Malaysia. tell me seriously okay it, it this is a cape malay dish uh-huh now there's a group of people living in cape town called um, cape malay people okay and a few hundred years ago they were take, taken from malaysia yep. people were taken over as slaves from malaysia to south africa to go and work on the farms and also in the fishing industry right and very interesting 200 years later on, their culture is still extremely strong and rich there. Wow. Uh, they very much focus on the fishing industry for people there, so they're all dotted around the Cape Town area. Right. Strong culture, strong religion, um, and also the food. So this is actually one of their dishes. Okay, okay, wow. That's why it has so many spices. Well, it's got the spices and we also, they put a lot of dry fruit in it because oh. those are things which are easily accessible. Cape Town area is where it's a, it's a big fruit uh, production area. Okay, okay. So they use a lot of fruit in their babuati. Oh, wow. Okay, that's interesting so, to know. Yeah, yeah, because that's where your chutney, you put chutney in and jam. Right. Which are basically, it's fruit. 
Yeah, I put fresh fruit, I put dried fruit, and I put in some jam as well. Yeah, so there you go. So this is a very versatile dish in South Africa. You can serve it at weddings, at funerals, birthday parties, or just for a, for a Saturday lunch or at any occasion. Mm -hmm. And what makes it so nice is it's the ingredients are very affordable in South Africa. Meat is quite cheap in South Africa. Yep. So are fruit and the other sp and spices that goes in. Mm -hmm. So this is a dish that nearly everyone knows it from you oh. know, poor people or students on a on a very tight budget. Yeah. To you know, you can go to very wealthy banquets and there's going to be baburti. So oh. it's 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 very versatile and you'll get it everywhere. So it's for everyone. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Pretty much everyone eats it. So you told me a secret about, you know, like um, Cape Malay. So what other secrets about South Africa would you like to share? Like Ooh. if you if you go online and you know, like um, if you go online, you'll find like those typical tourist spots, like you know, like yeah. Kru like Kruger National Park. Yes. Um, what else? Um, yeah, okay, so Johannesburg. Yeah. So is there like a secret spot that only South Africans know about? Oh, there's a secret spot, but that's can't tell it because it's where we've got our um, family beach house. Okay. It's an area called Plettenberg Bay. Uh -huh. It's in the Western Cape. It is just so beautiful. And I think 10 minutes drive from where we are, here's a little fun fact for you. Uh -huh. It's the highest bungee jumping bridge, bungee jump bridge in the world. Oh wow. Natural one, yes. It's, if I can remember right correctly, it's 220 meters high. Uh -huh. It's like about a half a height of 101 tower. Oh, it doesn't wow. sound high until you stand there and you have to jump off. Uh -huh. Then it's high. So very special place, very beautiful. It's the forest that goes right onto the beautiful beaches. We've got whales coming in during winter time. Nice. We've got dolphins there. You sit literally in the living room and you can watch them. Oh, so wow. incredibly beautiful in the mornings when we sit outside on a patio. Yep. Uh, we've got these green parrots, wild oh. green parrots, which comes in, they're called luris, nice uh -huh. nice luris. Yeah. And they come and sit there and they're always begging for food. That's so cute. Um, yeah, so it's it's so beautiful and you're in nature. It's stunningly beautiful. You, you're like in the comfort of your own home, but then you enjoy like, you know, like you don't even have to watch Discovery anymore. You can no. just look out the window and you see You've all the You've got it all right there. Right. And yeah, I'll give you some more interesting facts. Okay. Uh, in South Africa, they speak 17 different languages. Okay. Of which 11 of them are official. Yep. Which means each and every government document must be in eleven must be available in eleven different languages. Oh, wow. So anything you officially want to do, there must be somebody who can speak one of those languages fluently. Oh wow! Um, then Thai, uh, the size of Taiwan. Ah, uh, sorry, size of South Africa. South yeah. Africa is quite big. You can fit Taiwan thirty-four times. Thirty-four times. Thirty-four times into South Africa. Yep. And here's an interesting one. Yeah. We only have two and a half times the population of Taiwan. Wow, so you have a lot of space. Oh, open space. Yeah. Wide, wide open spaces. Because also in South Africa, many people are concentrated around the cities. Yep. Because obviously that's where the work is. Yep. So as soon as you're out of the cities, it's just open. So you can be driving for like 20, 30 minutes and not see a see Oh, one. very easily. Yeah. Yeah, very easily. That like um I did that recently and I I found that, you know, scary but also relaxing. It's very nice. No. Yeah. Look, I can highly recommend South Africa to anyone who wants to go there for a holiday destination. Yep. Obviously, you've got to be a bit street smart. You know, don't show off fancy jewelry or anything. Yeah. It is unfortunately there is a danger aspect, but mm -hmm. um Touch wood, I've never been robbed in South Africa. I've never had any problems with that. Mm -hmm. And it's just being being sensible when you're out. Yeah, so remember common sense mm. and then, you know, like um, just be humble and low key, right? 100% and always ask for locals. Read up on TripAdvisor what to do and what not to do. But yep. I've, I've had so many foreign friends there, so many Taiwanese friends who came and visited there. My family-in-law came and visit, visited there. Yeah. 
absolutely loved it. It's definitely a destination to go to. All right, I can't wait to visit South Africa one day. Thank you very much for your time. That's a big pleasure, and thank you so much for this beautiful babuti. It is absolutely delicious. Folks, go and try and make this dish. Get the recipe from from Joe's site. And um, yeah, go make it. It's very delicious. You'd love it. Thank you. Okay. Directions. For each question in this part, you will hear four statements about a picture in your test book. When you hear the statements, you must select the one statement that best describes what you see in the picture. Then, find the number of the question on your answer sheet and mark your answer. The statements will not be printed in your test book and will be spoken only one time. Question 1. A. There's a child crying in the picture. B. The children are riding a bike. C. There is some artwork on the wall. D. The bike's basket is in the back. Question 2. The hot air balloon is about to explode. B. The balloon is floating in the sky. C. The stormy weather makes this activity quite dangerous. D. The parachute is rather colorful. Number 3. A. The bottle is full, so it is heavy. B. The person is holding the bottle with her right hand. C. The plastic bottle battered into many pieces. D. The label is towards the bottom of the bottle. Question 4. A. Each house has a light in front. B. Only five houses can be seen in the picture. C. All of the houses have plants in front. D. The first two houses' roofs share the same color. Number 5. A. There is a tree in front of the temple. B. The stone church looks like it's been there for centuries. C. Almost all the branches' leaves have fallen off. D. The bird chirping near the tree is noisy.